And of course, the plaza is this area over in there. Here is another picture taken again shortly after the turn of the century showing the Shreve store, the little butcher shop, the hotel, which by this time was advertising Golden West beer, the plaza fenced now, and Mount Diablo Boulevard heading west. And notice this tree. I think it's still there. Look at the next picture. Taken from just about the same spot. Mount Diablo Boulevard, the hotel corner, Shreve store. Same tree, I think. The plaza. A few changes have been made as Lafayette grew up might have predicted. Now here's a picture taken the other way. Taken also about the same time I would venture to guess sometime around 1900. Here you see the just a bit of the porch of that hotel over on the Phillips 66 corner and looking through it you see Shreve store the Giles building, and now for the first time you see the Wayside Inn, which was built in 1894 at a time when there was no hotel on this corner because of fire. This was built uh, to be the hotel by other interests, and then of course this hotel was replaced, so at this time then Lafayette had two hotels. Now here is the plaza, of course, Mont Diablo Boulevard running here. And, of course, Mount Diablo Boulevard did not run due east as it does now. The road went down around the plaza and down Golden Gate Way, you see. Now, if you look here just above this uh, old buggy here up on the hill, it looks more like a blob of white. But this was Lafayette's church, Methodist Church, which uh, was built as a lodge hall and uh, later used as a church. It was on a little hill. Uh, that hill was leveled in the late 1920s. and. Uh, Ultimately, the Union Gas Station and Red Pinsky's building were built on the spot. Now we'll see this same picture, or pr practically the same view as it looks today. A little bit more resemblance, perhaps, than some of those earlier ones. Shreve store, the Giles building, the Wayside Inn, site of the church, plaza in the foreground. This picture was taken about 1940. I'm sure there are many people present here who recall the plaza when it looked like this. Not too terribly much different as, than it is today, except you don't see any cars. <laughs> Wayside Inn, the Giles Building, and the Pioneer Store, which at that time had been remodeled, looks very much as it does today, but still was serving as a grocery store, as it did until just about this time. What then of Lafayette's Plaza, which is now such a little beauty spot? Some years ago, the stone from one of the stones from Elam Brown's grist mill was installed in the plaza and then was marked with a plaque to indicate something of the importance of early Lafayette. This plaque is not wholly accurate, but at least it was an attempt to call to our attention the fact that Lafayette is older than what anybody knows. This plaque recently we had removed and shined up and looks a little bit better. And then in June of this year, of this past year, 1970, the Historical Committee, in cooperation with the Rotary Club of Lafayette, dedicated three more bronze plaques in the plaza area, at which time Lafayette Plaza, with its historic buildings, was recognized as a state point of historical interest. As a matter of fact, the state markers uh, have arrived and uh, are going to be erected hopefully sometime this week.
the state signs at the corner of Plaza Way and Moraga Road, directing people to these plaques. This plaque indicates that Elam Brown gave the plaza lot to the people of Lafayette on the date given, although it was actually in use as a plaza even before that. So this little plaza, you see, has been a part of Lafayette almost from the beginning of Lafayette's existence. This is the plaque that we put on our Pioneer Store building, which is certainly the most important of those three buildings still standing. The building that served as Lafayette store and post office from the time it was built in the early 1860s until around the turn of the century and continued as a store even after that. I presume that these plaques are readable to everybody. I don't have to read the text of them. And here the plaque for the Wayside Inn. Not a terribly old building, I guess, as buildings go, but it's all we have left of the several hotels that once stood in our town. Here is the oldest picture we have found of Shreve's store, the Pioneer Store building. This was a tin type made, uh, I would venture to guess, in the 1870s sometime. In fact, it is possible, we don't know for sure, that this is Benjamin Shreve. We don't have any other picture of him to compare it with. It was a small building, and to it, Shreve attached his home. Here's how the same building looked shortly after the turn of the century by which time it had come into the hands of Robert McNeil. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, it, it's, uh, it's quite remarkable that a grandson of Benjamin Shreve is still alive. Uh, and, and he's not a terribly old man. Uh, we, uh, we expected, upon learning that a grandson was still alive, we thought we might find a great-grandson, but we thought, well, if the grandson is still alive, he must be in his 90s. And uh, I think that Horace is not yet 70. It, uh, it's remarkable. Uh, and uh, uh, he lives in... I don't know, he might not be with us this evening. I'm sure he was invited. Some of you met him, I know, at the dedication in June. And he is the one who lent us the tin type and another very early picture of the store. Here is the store again under Robert McNeil's ownership, showing a little bit more of the detail of the house adjoining and showing the plaza very nicely fenced at this point. This would have been taken uh, sometime in the first part of this century. And here's an interior view of the store taken uh, in the late 1920s. Here is Mr. McNeil, and the others are members of his family. I hope Mrs. Rusi won't mind if I point her out. <laughs> At this time, of course, the store was only half its present size. Mr. McNeil enlarged it shortly after this picture was taken. But there's a typical old-fashioned general store. Everything on the shelves, even too high to reach. Vegetables down in the corner. And uh, all kinds of useful and helpful implements for daily life, such as could be found in an old-fashioned general store. By this time, the store had passed into the hands of George Hinckley and here we can see the evidence of Mr. McNeil's enlargement and remodeling. This is the original store here, the right-hand part. And uh, Mr. McNeil added this part and then covered over the two roof peaks with this false front. Here's the old house extending to the right. Here's the Giles building with some uh, Elizabethan front on it there. 
I suppose the only reason that we even have this picture, it was taken around uh, 1936 or so uh, to show a freak snowfall. Look at the plaza all covered in snow. 1937. 37. And here is the scene as it looks today. The building is still there. It has been in use for well over a century and uh, it has been adapted to modern needs and conveniences. From the hotel corner, one gets a, a better view of the size of that building, the store with the residential addition now hidden behind the uh, structures that were put up in recent years, Pam's Restaurant, the Realty and Beauty Salon and so forth, were all built in the garden area in front of the old Shreve, later McNeil, residence. From the La Fiesta shopping center, one gets a, an aspect of the construction of these old buildings, hemmed in by modern additions, uh, providing quite a contrast today to the new building of Mr. Campana and the new building of the La Fiesta shops built on the site of the burnt structure. And let us face it, our historic buildings, by contrast, are an eyesore. The conclusion of those who would not appreciate the history would be that they should be removed. The conclusion of those who see their importance are that they should be restored. Perhaps someday Soon, Benjamin Shreve's store can once again look like this and be a vital part of downtown Lafayette realty, uh, 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 retail area. I would uh, like to acknowledge the presence here this evening of Walter Costa, an architect who made this drawing and the others that you'll see. Uh, he is uh, a member of the Planning Commission of the City of Lafayette and has extended very generously his cooperation in preparing a possible future slide for our historic buildings to balance the present and the past. I would venture to guess that uh, Postmaster Crandall would find objection to the use of the words Lafayette Post Office on this building, but I think we could even look for a variance from the sign commission to put back the old sign S-T-O-R-E, period. This is the Wayside Inn as seen uh, around uh, uh, 1915, perhaps a little earlier, with the Giles building to the right. This was a tavern and hotel, and uh, was named by one of its proprietors, T.H. Reed, who was an Englishman and thought the name Wayside Inn rather appropriate. It looked like this a few years later after it was acquired by Gerhard Pat Medal and uh, became a meat market. Again, perhaps the only reason that we have this picture is that it was taken to record one of the Greek snowfalls. The Giles building again to the right, a building that we have very few individual pictures of. And this interior was taken 
even after it was a meat market, it was a, an ice cream parlor and candy uh, fountain. And uh, uh, this, of course, was the old bar room at one time, and uh, it's now Jack Hagman's insurance office. And here, the Wayside Inn, as it looks today, certainly the one of the three structures that has best preserved its integrity. Hold this for me. When you look at it from the back, you see some of the construction and uh, the one-story portion there is in some ways probably older than the two-story portion because it is said to have been built from lumber from an earlier building that was torn down. Uh, the, the, the tradition is that it was a blacksmith shop one time. I haven't been able to pin down anything definitely about it. Some of the original structure which dates from about 1880, was originally a saloon and residence and later used for different kinds of shops. Uh, it's the least important of the three buildings. We didn't even award it a bronze plaque, but we certainly could some later date. But it is essential to the integrity of the complex because it stands between the other two buildings. And this is how one side of it looks from a little walkway. And here it is from the back. And here is how it might look if restored. As I said, this is the only complex of historical buildings left in our town, but uh, there are a few scattered residences and uh, other such buildings uh, around the town that do have historical value and importance. And uh, one of these uh, would be the old house that stands on Moraga Boulevard uh, at the creek and just about at the corner of Carroll Lane. This is probably the oldest residence in Lafayette, still standing, is very likely uh, considerably over a century old. To me, the most attractive of the old homes around here, however, is the present Wayne Merriman home uh, on Topper Lane, just off St. Mary's Road, which was put up about 1890 and was the home of two ladies, sisters, who were one, who, one of whom was the town dressmaker and the other one the mail carrier. This building is uh, a home built, I would venture to guess, in uh, the first decade of this century on uh, present McEllen Way near the creek. Lafayette has had a number of schools. The first one, you'll see a picture of it in, uh, among the pictures downstairs, I think. Uh, the first one was uh, built in the very early 1850s uh, down in the in the area of Second and Golden Gate Way. And about 1870, a second school was built at the present location of the Lafayette Methodist Church. And uh, that building was outgrown and in more recent times was moved up to Mount Diablo Boulevard where it served for a while as a post office and telephone exchange and library and so forth. And it's still there, but all that you can see of it now is the roof. It's all been remodeled, but that building is just about a century old used to stand down just about where the Methodist Church is now. And the Methodist Church, of course, is in part the third Lafayette school built in the early 1890s. And you will see pictures uh, downstairs of uh, 
this building when it served as a school. This building I don't think is terribly old, uh, nor do I feel that it has uh, any great historical value, and yet uh, it is uh, a structure of some age that has been uh, fixed up and made to serve a modern purpose and serve it rather well. And I think to that extent it serves perhaps as uh, an example of what uh, uh, we might try to do uh, with the more important buildings that are on the plaza. We are presently enjoying our uh, evening's get-together is itself a building of very worthwhile historical value, uh, although reasonably new, built around the time of World War I as a town hall, a community hall. And it stands today as perhaps the uh, preeminent example thus far of historical preservation in Lafayette because, as many of you know, this building was threatened with demolition and had it not been saved by a practical use, a, 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 a utility, rather than just to stand as an empty monument, uh, had it not been saved uh, as a practical, useful building by the dramateurs, uh, it probably would not be here today. And I think the same kind of thing can be done in our plaza uh, with the cooperation of the uh, city, with the cooperation of the present or future property owners and that this can remain a uh, historical commercial part of Lafayette. You'll see a display of past, present, and future, what it was, what it is, and what it can be uh, downstairs. And uh, in that same uh, uh, light, I would like to um, uh, represent some of the main slides. Our Pioneer Store, our oldest known commercial building and most important one. This is the way it was. This is the way it is. And this is what it can be. I would venture to guess that specialty shops of various kinds would go into these buildings uh, under such a plan and my own personal suggestion would be that the Pioneer store could house nothing better than a good old-fashioned general store. I think we need one. The Wayside Inn, as it was, as it is, and as it can be. And the little Giles building, too, as it was, as it is. And as it can be, once again. How about the general aspect of our old town plaza? as it was, as it is, and as it can be. Wayne, would you like to...
Slap, you idiot. The master plan or the proposed master plan for the central area of Lafayette, uh, as drafted by the city planner, Paul Woodview. Uh, if you do, I think you'll be impressed in many ways. One of the one of the thoughts that keeps recurring throughout this master plan is the idea of opportunity. There is an opportunity here. And of course, remember, sometimes opportunity knocks only once. Uh, throughout the master plan, one finds the, the constantly reiterated statement, the people of Lafayette want a semi-rural community. The people of Lafayette want a village or small town atmosphere. It seems to me that right in line with and implementing that kind of goal, which many, many people have spoken quite eloquently on this past week, the retention of all we have left of the time when Lafayette was a rural community and was a uh, small town, as it was for most of its over a century of existence. Implementation of this particular goal is completely in line with this statement from the master plan. As you know, the master plan looks forward to a new shopping plaza in Lafayette adjacent to the BART terminus. And what then will happen to the old town plaza? And I deliberately picked the words old town plaza for that plaque because that is what it is and what it definitely will become in light of the new town plaza. Hall and Goodhue, after going great lengths to describe this new shopping plaza, then make a statement like this. It is possible to indicate in general the kind of improvements which should take place. For instance, in the area of the existing plaza, there is an opportunity to create an old town, to create a section with a theme based on the past, which can add color and vitality to the retail area. Uh, it seems to me that in line with the total objective of the plan, the enhancement of Mont Diablo Boulevard, the making of Lafayette's commercial district to be a thing of beauty rather than uh, a strip with uh, dubious uh, qualifications of um, visual, um, uh, I suppose as some would call it visual pollution. Um, <laughs> It seems to me that this step would be right in line and uh, would help toward the enhancement of our downtown area and would serve to uh, be a uh, constant reminder to us of the fact that we do have roots. I, I honestly feel that one of the things that is wrong with our society, we all complain so much about the turmoil in our society today, is that we are not conscious of our roots. Lafayette's roots go very deep. They are the roots that are really in the soil because people live and all we have left now in commercial reminder is our little uh, plaza area. <coughs> Many towns have developed an old town. They faked it. They put up buildings and made them look old. Uh, you can find examples of that all around California. Lafayette doesn't need to do that. We have our old buildings. Let us save them now, not regret their loss later. They are, of course, in no immediate danger, but I don't believe in last-minute crusades. It seems to me we should begin to work on a project like this long before the bulldozers might be parked at the door. Uh, let me conclude then by saying just a word about some of the other aspects of what a historical society is, although Mrs. Davis went uh, very well into some of these. Uh, I think, first of all, that a historical society, if it is to be formed, should form with a primary object, an immediate primary goal. And I would suggest as the primary goal, or certainly one of the primary goals of this uh, projected historical society, the implementation of the restoration and preservation of our historic plaza and buildings. Uh, it seems to me that in general, any historical society, as I said before, should have preservation as one of its main goals. Preservation of those smaller artifacts which can be displayed in glass cases and of those larger ones which must of necessity remain standing along our streets and form a part of our today as well as of our yesterday. It seems to me also that 
uh, one of the primary goals of historical society should be such things as oral history, the taping of the recollections of our early citizens, uh, research, and there's so much research to be done. And uh, uh, of course, there are going to be members who will join tonight or at some other time who are interested mostly in uh, social organization. There's room for that too. There's room for uh, dinners, for uh, speakers, for an educational and social aspect. This is important and of course the dues of those members are very important too. But I hope that the Lafayette Historical Society would always be an active group, a group that centers around action even as our historical committee has. There are two kinds of people who gravitate kind of automatically towards this type of thing. One would be senior citizens or those who may not be so old but do have roots in the community through their ancestors. And the other would be young people, people in their teens, people in their early 20s. These are people who are in search of roots. Perhaps us middle-aged people are the ones who seem, for the most part, least interested in something like this unless we have some kind of roots already in the community. But the older people and the younger people are the ones who are definitely interested and their interest should be captured and held. And I'm gratified to see so many younger people here this evening. And I think there's so much that younger people can do in a historical society. Certainly, uh, I think they should not be limited to the idea of, give, of receiving a prize for the best composition. There are younger people who can do an awful lot of the research, who can do an awful lot of the taping of oral history, who can really get involved in the wherewithal of such a group, and I would encourage them to do so. I've talked far too long now. I thank you for your kind of <laughs> Father Avalon, I think it's very hard to be anything but extremely enthusiastic after that kind of presentation, not only about our past, but about our future. About our present, no comment. But our future, right when I, I trust. At this time, I think it would be appropriate for anyone in the audience who has a question unanswered about the concept of a Lafayette Historical Society to toss their question out, and I can refer the question to anyone in the audience I think might be able to answer it. Any questions at this time? Remarkable. Yes, ma'am. Um,
Charlie from Moraga company as it was called in the James River on the Minnesota uh, did farm uh, this area right around Lafayette itself. And uh, many of our people who we held on to uh, after Carpentier took the rest of the way, five out of the six.
what I think will be a very important asset to our community. The names given to me by the nominating committee are Father William Abelow. And I wonder, folks, if uh, those of you who are here who have been nominated would be good enough to come and stand in front of the room so some who don't know you will be introduced to you in that way. Father Abelow, uh, Walter Costa, former chairman of the Planning Commission, an architect. Dr. John Hansen. John? John. Orville Jones. Orville Jones. Orville Jones is descendant of a pioneer family. Uh, yeah, great-grandson. Great-grandson. Uh, Milt Frizzoni is Milt here tonight. Milt and Frizzoni. There he is. Milt Frizzoni. Uh, one of our major property developers and, of course, one of the prime movers in the beautiful center we have in the middle of town. Mrs. William Summerton. Summerton. Mrs. Summerton. Lucille Boucher. Lucille here? Lucille Boucher. Joan Merriman. <laughs> You're going to segregate My mom. Joint owner of that gorgeous white house that you saw in one of the slides that I'd love to have. Miss Gloria Duffy. <laughs> Her name is here. Are there any other nominations? Is there a motion that the nominations be closed? Is there a second? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. All those in favor of closing the nominations, please say aye. aye, aye. All those in favor of the recommendations of the nominating committee, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. I think we're in business. We will be contacted by the board. And the board will be having its first meeting very soon, I hope. I guess if you have filled out your questionnaires and have indicated we can go from there. And I wish you all and all of us good luck. The end. I hope. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Noisy, isn't it? <laughs> I know, I know. Why? Okay, I'm okay.